It is good, and because before before proceeding to to Juba, we had just actually just arrived. We arrived to leave for for Juba uh, from Tehran, where again we represented uh, His Excellency and the uh, the President and the country uh, during the summit of uh, uh, the the 14th summit of the G15. Now G15 is a very interesting grouping of countries that are originally, or they, all of them are members of the non-aligned movement. And in 1979 in Belgrade, and then Yugoslavia, they actually set up the G15. Now, these are countries that are seen to be very close to take off. Um, and in, within the African context, we had Kenya, Zimbabwe, uh, Senegal, Egypt, and Nigeria. South Africa had not, of course, become what, what she is today. Um, and uh, the intention was to help these countries through trade to be able to take off. And, and um, happily, some of them have already moved to the next level. Countries like Brazil, India, uh, actually a very good example of countries that were then seemingly at the same level, even with us at, as, as, as Kenya in 1979, but have since, because of uh, right economic policies and the sheer determination of their citizens, been able to move to the next level. We were able to share, of course, our vision with regard to Vision 2030. Um, and, and I, I forgot to mention a country like Malaysia, uh, or even in, indeed uh, Indonesia. So they're all G15 countries, uh, Venezuela and others. Um, and, and so the emphasis in Tehran was on trade uh, between the G15 countries and, of course, addressing the current challenges uh, in the world today, including uh, the effects of the um, financial crisis, which had a de deliberating effect on the economies of many countries. For us, of course, uh, we were able to share with them the fact that uh, we suffered because Kenyans in the diaspora were not able to send as much support as they ordinarily we are used to doing through Western Union um, and, and, and other avenues. And you see, you see Treasury, uh, I think year, last year, was able to net in nearly a billion, a billion US dollars uh, from, uh, by way of remittances by Kenyans abroad. So we are not spared the effect of all this. And of course, uh, rather than just wondering what happened, we have to look to the future with confidence. And therefore, the G15 countries um, are prepared. And we came up with a necessary communique, which was agreed. And normally, the operating arm is, uh, comprises our representatives in Geneva, uh, permanent representatives um, of, of the member countries. And so that is where we were. And uh, we thought it was that kept us <laughs> quite busy in the last five or six days. And, and we are back, to, we are lucky, we are, we, are, we are happy to be back home. And I know that even what I've just told you, you've been following uh, through uh, relevant uh, arms of the media, including, I'm sure, YouTube <laughs> and, and, and Facebook and, and Twitter, because this, this alternative media is looking very, very, very interesting and very vibrant. And the country, and therefore, you know, we begin to see that the world has become truly a global village. But that, I said, so as to be able to refresh our minds. Even it is um, interesting to see uh, what has actually happened since the signing of a comprehensive peace agreement. For instance, Kenyans have already registered with the consulate in Juba, a number 7,000. And these are people who are, who are working so hard in all manner of um, uh, engagements, including the construction industry. As you know, some of the Kenyan banks, like Kenya Commercial Bank, Equity Bank, I'm told even Cooperative Bank, is moving to South Sudan. So they've done very good positioning because this country should be able to reap the benefits of our contribution to the Sudanese peace process. And so. That's what I can say, and of course, on um, yesterday, we received the sad news of the passing on of our dear friend, Mishimua Kennedy Kiliku, former member for Changamwe. <clears throat> I want to send my condolences to the family, um, relatives, and friends of the late Kennedy Kiliku. Those of you 
who may have known uh, the late Kiliku know how vibrant he was as a member of parliament for Changamwe. And so we, we, our hearts go out to the family <clears throat> and indeed to all the people of Changamwe and the country. Because Honorable Kiliku uh, stood tall above, above even re regional politics. He was truly a national leader, a very able debater in parliament and fearless at that. So we'll all miss uh, the contribution of our brother, Kennedy Kiliku. The campaigning, I think that the Committee of Experts gave one month for, um, for civic education. But I think they should uh, understand that Kenyans are eager to get on with this business of getting a new constitution. Uh, and so uh, if, if sometimes we are seen to be uh, breaking their rules with regard to campaigning, I'm sure they understand. Um, it is all part of it, I'm sure. So even, even those, I think the president, the prime minister, and others who are in Mbakasi today, um, and I know that uh, strong messages will have gone out on why we need this constitution. Listening to the statement by President uh, Salva Kiy uh, yesterday, I realize that even Southern Sudanese seem to have a better constitution than us. They're very strong on gender issues and uh, a clearly very progressive constitution. 